Well, one of the most popular talk radio show hosts in the nation saw his broadcast taken down nationwide yesterday. This is absolutely remarkable, totally insane, and the evidence that massive censorship is here. Now, I'm talking about radio host Michael Savage of the Savage Nation. It's a nationally syndicated talk show, the second most listened to radio talk show in the country. 20 million people listen regularly on 400 stations across the United States. Now, yesterday he was talking about his perspectives on the upcoming presidential debate, um, and he was also discussing Hillary Clinton's mysterious health condition. He started kind of getting into whether or not it's Parkinson's. So in the middle of his broadcast, without any notification, the station there that's carrying it in the, the tri-state area, WABC Radio TV, they cut Savage off right in the middle of his broadcast and immediately replaced him with a lesser rated Curtis and Kuby show. And according to the broadcast that Michael Savage was able to get out, he's hearing them laughing about the fact that they are a part of this coup that's you know taking down the Savage Nation. And so as Michael Savage is talking this out in real time about how his show is being censored, cut down in the New York area, immediately all of the affiliates nationwide took down his show. So this was a massive show of power by these networks that were able to cut off his broadcast, a, a very popular broadcast, immediately without any notice nationwide, a show of force to say, look, we are in charge here. You shall not speak about Hillary Clinton's health. And of course, Matt Drudge did warn about uh, this coming, this massive censorship and the fact that they are shoving people into these <laughs> ghettos because they want to consolidate the power. And this is the kind of massive effect that we could see that someone like Michael Savage could have his entire broadcast shut down. Now, Margaret Howell joins the show now. And I wanted to really get into you know, this is Hillary's America. Mm -hmm. She has already kind of put it out there in her alt-right speech that she's coming after anyone that she deems to be a part of this mythical alt-right. Any dissenting voices, any politically correct opinions are going to be shut down, and we're starting to see that across the board. What an act of desperation to be able to, you know, go after him in such a coup. It was pure sabotage. And look, we know that the mainstream media, they're her number one campaign volunteer, and they are in an all-out war right now to make sure that you don't hear the truth. And all he really did, Leanne, was just question her health, question the effects of a drug that's related to Parkinson's and say, is this why she's having these symptoms because she's exemplifying them? And yet we know that this is a possible link. He didn't even actually indict her on having Parkinson's because right. no medical record has been released that's actually true. So, you and know, this is the same thing that happened with uh, Dr. Drew Pinsky. <laughs> he speculated as well and ha we saw his very popular show got taken off of the air. They, so. they have no problem cutting people midstream. Uh, Brianna Keeler, she questioned Clinton on the air. It was immediately cut. Same thing with Savage here. And you're absolutely right. Pinsky was mysteriously fired after a wildly popular HLN show for even questioning her health. So we know that the media elites in this country, they don't want us really getting to the bottom of this, especially 41 days before the election. So we need to squash anybody who might be a Trump surrogate in the media, especially if they have enough followers like Savage. You know, I've listened to his show. It's very, very insightful and entertaining, 20 million strong. So let's just hope that his viewers come to bat for him because he's clearly been the victim of pure sabotage. Right. And this is kind of going into the broader scope here with this consolidation and how a lot of these tech giants have become basically uh, public utilities and more powerful than governments in a lot of cases. And they are really pushing for the United States to relinquish its control over the Internet. And here we we have an open and free Internet here because thanks to the fact that it, it, it's the jurisdiction is under the United States. But they're mm -hmm. saying with passing it over, um, that is going to increase the power of foreign governments over the Internet and possibly these governments that would want to curb the ability for their population <laughs> to access oh. free and open information from a non-biased sources, from alternative sources that aren't just those establishment um, propaganda channels that mm -hmm. you know we've had to fight through here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that they're afraid that something like that is going to happen once we relinquish control, mm -hmm. but it's already happening. We're right. seeing YouTube, Google, Twitter, across the board, they're already starting to implement this Orwellian censorship. You're so right. So YouTube has this troll hero army that's that attacks people that they don't agree with publicly in these forums. But more importantly, the Internet freedom um, is at stake here in this country because our own president, the Traitorous Act, 
that he's committing as a part of his legacy. He's actually handing over power or freedom of the Internet to ICANN, ICANN, excuse me, which we know that China and Iran are, you know, board members of ICANN. And we also know that China, if they gain control over this aspect of our own Internet, that websites, domain names like .mil and .gov are at stake, which affect our own national security. And it's also going to be housed in the same place where China controls its own Internet. So right. you can only imagine what's going to happen there. Uh, let me think. People that don't agree with our right to free speech are going to be controlling what we say on the Internet. Right. Awesome. And another kind of glaring fact, when we see these tech giants really pushing for the U.S. to hand over and go, go to globalists with the Internet, is the fact that there are still billions of people in countries like India, um, <laughs> Africa, some parts of Asia, where they don't even have access to the Internet. Mm -hmm. So they know there's this whole burgeoning market yet that still has to be tapped mm -hmm. into. However, their governments are not going to be okay with the citizens of those nations mm -hmm. having the ability to access whatever information they so desire. We're already mm -hmm. seeing in China how they massively censor the Internet. Um, you can't even access mm -hmm. sites like Facebook so it's really interesting how uh, Lu Wei, who is the um, kind of overseer there of Chinese, the, their draconian censorship uh, mm -hmm. that they have over the Internet there, he is kind of the overseer. And he met with uh, Zuckerberg and Tim Cook in 2014. OK, mm -hmm. Facebook, uh, <laughs> Apple, these are, are not even allowed in China. So why Twitter. are you meeting with uh, these people? And that's because we've got this Orwellian thing coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Paul Joseph Watson reported about how the White House was um, test piloting a program for Chinese style ID system for internet users. Mm -hmm. So we we can see what is happening and it's got some frightening implications for even us here at InfoWars, frankly. Mm -hmm. Because we try very hard to bring you the most accurate form of the truth, the truth, you know, that's out there. We put our necks on the line doing it, frankly, Leanne, but just going back to that point of China having control. So we know that countries like China and Iran, and Owen and I covered this at length, uh, if they gain control, so they even censor their own populations. And what they've seen, what we've seen here in the U.S., we've been able to, in, in a way, question and nearly bring down, we're still working on it, bring down Hillary Clinton and her campaign through the truth. So if they can right. censor that in their own nations, it, it would it would make sure that people can't question their own leaders. There, there's going to be a censorship that's coming. We're going to see this push on September the 30th unless Congress acts. And, uh, you know, we don't want to be China. So we want to make sure right. that we, we're able to say what we want. It's no surprise that Zuckerberg would meet and, and want to do this deal. We understand what he is in his own censorship of Facebook. Mm -hmm. Taking down Joe, you know, Joe Biggs was censored, for example, over a Hillary piece. You know, it's, right. it's, this is this is commonplace. Right. Right. And of course, with this Chinese style ID system, basically what this means is that everyone would have uh, something akin to your social security number. It follows with you everywhere. You can't get rid of it, but it's how you access every single thing that you would want to do on the Internet. So you don't have to have those pesky passwords, right? Well, China already has something like like this. They link it to um, it's kind of like a credit score, but they they judge you based on your social habits, your spending <laughs> habits. Uh, and, and actually now there's like a, a relationship dating website that matches you up basically. Oh, well, this girl has the same sort of shopping habits as you. Maybe, oh, you know, so it's just like they're collating all of this data on you, telling you who you can be in a relationship mm -hmm. with. And if your friends have dissenting opinions, dissenting political opinions, that will actually affect your credit score. And this is something that they're wanting to bring here to the United States. This is massive. This is huge. This mm -hmm. got overshadowed by the debate last night, but we just wanted to really hammer home. This is a massively huge and important story. Alex Jones is actually going to have more on this coming up. And you'll never guess, for the first time, people actually had the chance to vote on whether or not they could have NSA surveillance. And of course, they chose their safety over their freedom. I've heard Donald say this um, at his rallies. Trump is winning this debate. It's, it's really unfortunate that he paints such a dire negative picture of black communities in our country. She says it's you the know, end the of the world. The people are getting killed. Church. Not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heal. The opportunities that so many families... She's are implying he's bashing black people, but he kids. wants to cut crime and help uh, them. There's a lot that we should be proud of. And, and get cops to respond. He is proud. Up. But we do always have to make sure we keep people safe. 
There are the right ways of doing it, and then there are ways that are ineffective. Stop and frisk was found to be unconstitutional, and in part because it was ineffective. It did not do what no, it No, things aren't unconstitutional because they're ineffective. Policing. Because they're unconstitutional. Fact, violent crime is one half of what it was in 1991. Property crime is down 40 percent. But I thought we got to take all we the guns. It's an epidemic of crime. You're right. We've had Hillary tells the truth. The headline: Five years. Crime is way down. They hype it all up. But there were. It's only problems. down in cities run by Democrats where they've taken all the guns from law-abiding. My God, Hillary just Latino told the truth. Ended up it's like in finding a unicorn. And in fact, violent crime is one half of what it was in 1991. Property crime is down 40 percent. These globalists are desperate that the public not learn of the FBI statistics that are collected from local governments across the United States that conclusively show since 1991, violent crime has dropped 49 percent. It's going straight down because gun ownership is going straight up. Gun ownership goes up crime rates go down. It is a fact. And the system is panicking over that, that Chicago and New York and other places where only the government mafia has firearms are crime-ridden bastions of oppression. Think about it. We see a giant Homeland Security arms build up, and then we get their terror training manuals, and they announce their new number one enemy is gun owners and people that won't turn their firearms in. This is an authoritarian takeover. This is an attempt to sell their purge against the American people. Too many young African American and Latino men ended up in jail for nonviolent offenses. And it's just a fact that if you're a young African American man and you do the same thing as a young white man, you are more likely to be arrested charge convicted and incarcerated you ship the crack cocaine so in the black neighborhoods we've got to address the systemic racism in our criminal justice system we can't which not is the mandatory sentencing you got orders. passed that you honcho you bragged about say, with respect to the crime bill i think as more americans focus on the fact that this bill would have put more police on the street would have locked up violent offenders so they never could get out again uh, would have given more prison construction money available to the states and uh, as well as the federal government, but also would have dealt with prevention, giving young people something to say yes to. Uh, it's a very well thought out crime bill that is both smart and tough. Hillary Clinton's platform calls for a reformation of her spouse's policies. Bill Clinton signed the 1994 Violent Crime Control Law and Law Enforcement Act. Harsher sentencing laws followed as states were given fiscal incentives to implement them. One in 15 African American men are incarcerated, yet African Americans only make up about 13 percent of the U.S. population. The incarceration rates have skyrocketed by 500 percent in just 30 years. The 80 billion dollar a year prison industrial complex has thrown people behind bars for five to ten years on first-time drug offenses. In other developed countries, sentences average out to be around six months, probation, or no jail time at all. According to California Prison Focus, no other society in human history has imprisoned so many of its own citizens. We we have to come forward. Sorry, she's with just such a, a BSer, folks. Everything she talks about, she did. She did. people from she the criminal did. justice she system. Earned. That one. Deal there. with mandatory minimum right sentences, which have put too many people away for too long for doing too little. We need to have more <laughs> second chance programs. I'm glad that we're ending private prisons in the federal system. I want to see them ended in the state. She pioneered system. it. You shouldn't have a profit motivation to fill prison cells with young Americans. So there are some positive ways we can work on this. And this I this would be like Thomas Jefferson badmouthing the Declaration of Independence he wrote. She is badmouthing everything she ever did, hoping you're an idiot. Right Sorry, now, just shut her. And this just go is back to her. Donald has supported, oh along with the gun lobby, right now. We've got too many military-style weapons on the streets. In a lot of places, Which our commit police 4 are of the crime. We need comprehensive background checks. We have them. We need to keep guns out of the hands of those who will do harm. And we finally need to pass a prohibition on anyone who's on the terrorist watch list 
from being able to buy a Extra gun. Extra judicial. If you're too dangerous, outside to fly, of due process, you take your guns. That's the big one. Gun. She so wants to be able to put you on a secret list do it in a bipartisan when you have no convictions and, and take your guns. You Huge. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 27th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, one of the most popular talk shows in American history has been shut down as the liberal establishment celebrates the end of the savage nation. It's not a joke, but I read you some of the side effects of Levodopa. And then I was cut off the air. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton tells the truth. Crime is indeed sharply down. Unless, of course, you live in a Democrat-controlled town. Plus, for the first time ever, increased government surveillance will be voted on. As now, even Switzerland prepares to sacrifice freedom for safety. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. It was a year ago that the reclusive Matt Drudge of DrudgeReport.com visited Austin, Texas with an unannounced emergency message for our listeners. I had a Supreme Court justice tell me to my face, it's over for me. I said, Matt, it's over for you. They've got the votes now to enforce copyright law. You're out of there. They're going to make it so headlines you can't even use headlines. To have a Supreme Court justice say that to my face, that it's over. They've got the votes, which means time is limited. Time is not forever. How many more moons and sunrises will you see in your life? Uh, rise and fall. There's not that many. It's a small amount. So for people to be saying with this attitude, oh, I'll get on with my life and my greatness sometime. No. No, you can't. We're being enslaved now, and, and that's it. Under the TPP, they admit you can't put a headline to the New York Times. You're sending massive traffic to them. They're claiming you're taking their words. This is insane. And you had the Justice Stephen Breyer said we need to look at a global law. Now, remember just recently he getting had a book it lined up. up with it. So they're getting ready for these decisions to come. You thought Obamacare was shocking. You thought some of these other decisions were shocking. Wait until these copyright laws work their way up and the Supreme Court decides you cannot have a website with news headlines linking across the board. In just four days, the domain registry system and the internet IP address program will be handed over to a multinational consortium headed up by the United Nations and the Communist Chinese. The Communist Chinese are the biggest censors in the world and execute people that peacefully practice Buddhism. And this is who Facebook and Google and Twitter and Apple and others are working with. This is the new consortium that will decide the future rules of the Internet. Because whether it's China or areas in Africa, more and more poor people are now getting on the Internet in these countries. And those nations are finding it near impossible to completely censor that information. So what they're doing is coming to the United States and Europe and asking those governments to set up systems to censor the information promoting freedom before it gets to those other countries. Because if Obama's going to tell Africans, you can't have air conditioning or cars... Americans can't have air conditioning or cars, or at least Africans shouldn't be able to see that. Ultimately, if you think about all the youth that everybody's mentioned here in Africa, if everybody's raising living standards to the point where everybody's got a car and everybody's got air conditioning and everybody's got a big house, uh, well, the planet will boil over. Just last week, I had the former technical leader of the NSA on William Benning, and he said clearly, this is a corporate system establishing world government through the surveillance grid and the takeover of the Internet. 
what's the master strategy on building this technocracy? I mean, do, do they have one? I think it's a, uh, a uh, well, uh, this is my impression, okay. <laughs> Certainly it is uh, po population control, but not just of any given country, but of the world. And so what they're after in direct, and I think the, uh, Obama has stated this from various uh, points, uh, that he wanted a world community. Uh, so I think that's probably what they're after. In order to do that, they have to be able to control the people of the world. So in order to do that, you have to n have knowledge of them to know who's doing what so you can stop it or manipulate it any way you want. William Benny, that is the most profound thing I think I've ever heard you say, and you've said a lot of profound things. This is the key for a technocracy world government program, and Davos admits that's their plan, but uh, here you are, the former leader of the National Security Agency, telling us that that's what they're building. And I haven't heard you talk about world government being the objective, but I mean, it clearly is. Can you elaborate uh, with your geopolitical and geospatial and technical understanding? Yeah, well, I, I, see, that's the problem. The technology has made this all possible. I mean, I mean, we could easily follow 12 to 20 billion phone calls a day. If it's, uh, you know, like 10 million people moving around every day is trivial. That's a trivial issue. So all of that could be done by technology. And yet they're claiming something is really difficult when, in fact, it's not. Obama's czars are now openly calling for the return of the fairness doctrine where you can't have any political opinion on talk radio. They've been targeting talk radio sponsors. They have been going after my show. And just as Dr. Drew was pulled off the air for saying, hey, Hillary's clearly got medical problems. What she's being prescribed is deadly when you mix the drugs together. I want to help her. He was fired one week later. There are two other things that gravely concerned us. When she hit her head, she had to wear these prism glasses right. when she came out. Right. That is brain damage, and so that and it's affecting her balance. Now, clearly, it hasn't affected her cognition, but tell us a little more about that. And now, Michael Savage, yesterday, was first taken off WABC in New York. When the host began to gloat that it was a coup against him on air, Savage got word and began to basically criticize what was happening and was taken off 400-plus affiliates nationwide by CBS. Not only have I been sabotaged in the largest market that I have, it's clear sabotage because the two geniuses that they're using to fill in for me who have ratings that are about 40% lower than mine are gloating on the air that they've conducted a coup against Savage right on the air. Is I spent 30 minutes talking about Hillary's health problems. I read you every fact about it. I then read you the pharmacology of levodopa, which is the main drug for, for Parkinson's. And right in the middle of that discussion of levodopa and its side effects, I was cut off across the country. Now, I don't know how much longer this is going to hold up right now in the studio in which I'm uh, broadcasting from. Military style. He's pulled off WABC first. The decision is made where CBS is based in New York. Then... He's taken off 30 minutes later from his 400 stations across the country, and he's sitting there in San Francisco with his headphones in his studio broadcasting to no one for at least 10 minutes before he discovers that he's been taken off the air, and then he was told, you're basically done. Ladies and gentlemen, this is about a free press. Regardless of what you think about Michael Savage, love him or hate him, this is an attack on the very fundamental bedrock of this nation. This is 21st century book burning that's taking place. In closing, I want to ask viewers and listeners this paramount question. What is your line in the sand? The censorship, the control is all suddenly being phased in. They're going from beta to 1.0 right now. And the fight is happening. A year in political time is like the blink of an eye. And in the next year, we're going to see the attempt to shut down free speech and bully the American people and others into submission. Already in Europe, they arrest you if you criticize the open borders and the Islamic invasion. The mayor of London just assigned a police unit to arrest people that criticize Islam even mildly. He's an Islamicist. You add this to all the other things that are happening, it is crisis level we are facing 21st century warfare it's being conducted by mega banks huge corporations using giant migrant flows and collapsing third world populations that have been abused by this very system to bring down what's left of the west 
because the globalists see prosperity and independence as competition. They see the West and any form of wealth and individuals controlling just a small part of their destiny as a threat. That's why this tyranny is the greatest tyranny humanity's ever faced. And that's why all of us are now Michael Savage. All of us are now Spartacus. Spartacus was the famous Roman slave gladiator who led a revolt and almost toppled the Roman Empire. And it's a true story that they were killing thousands of the revolting slaves saying, we're Spartacus, we're Spartacus. They would all say, I'm Spartacus. Well, I don't want to say I'm jealous because it's a very dangerous position he's in. Uh, but the fact that they came for Michael Savage first really sets him into a very special category. They're very scared of him. And uh, they've told me they're coming for us next. We're already under a lot of pressure. We need your prayers and support. We're harder to shut down because we self-syndicate. We work on a lot of other Internet platforms. Uh, but um, we're in some very dark waters. So we're all Michael Savage now. And if you don't stand with him, and if you don't stand against 21st century book burning, it's going to be your views and your ideas that are that are banned next. So I, I hope everybody shares this report with everybody they know, because this isn't just America's fight. This is the world's fight. And we're, we're seeing the fall of our republic right now. Well, in the last couple of days, we've had two significant changes to Swiss law. And I think it tells us something very important about the death of the West. Now, the first one that happened today, many people might say, yeah, it's a good idea. They banned the burqa in public, you know, the complete covering of the face by Islamic women. But the other one that happened on Sunday was a referendum on NSA type of surveillance. Never had that before in Switzerland. And there's never been a referendum on NSA type surveillance. And we'll tell you how that turned out. Now, first of all, the burqa ban. It was described by one of the people supporting it as a ban on the expression of misogynistic Islamist ideology. The woman who said this said this symbol needs to be halted. But even though it truly is a misogynistic symbol, even though this is a symbol of the Islamic religion's hatred and denigration of women, it narrowly passed. 88 to 87 with 10 abstentions. That very narrow victory is not liable to hold up under the withering propaganda of political correctness. They're afraid to take a stand against this expression of hatred against women, against this theocracy that is invading the West. Now, the other referendum that happened on Sunday was full NSA-style surveillance. Unfortunately, 66% of the Swiss people said yes. Bring it on. We want to have our phones tapped. We want to have our email grabbed. We want to be a part of the international surveillance state. Interestingly enough, they're giving up their freedom just in time to join the rest of the world as the UN is taking over the internet. And we see the Swiss defense minister saying, it helps us to catch up to other countries. He said, we can leave the basement and come up to the ground floor by international standards. International standards of surveillance of the police state. William Binney on the Alex Jones Show pointed out that what we're seeing now is not an American problem. It is a global problem. A global surveillance state is being created. And the Swiss have just voted to join it. What's the master strategy on building this technocracy? I mean, do, do, do they have one? I think it's a... Uh, a uh well, uh, this is my impression, okay. <laughs> Certainly it is uh, pop population control, but not just of any given country, but of the world. And so what they're after in direct, and I think the, uh, Obama has stated this from various uh, points, uh, that he wanted a world community. Uh, so I think that's probably what they're after. In order to do that, they have to be able to control the people of the world. So in order to do that, you have to have knowledge of them to know who's doing what so you can stop it or manipulate it any way you want. William Benny, that is the most profound thing I think I've ever heard you say, and you've said a lot of profound things. This is the key for a technocracy world government program, and Davos admits that's their plan, but uh, here you are, the former leader of the National Security Agency, telling us that that's what they're building, a beast system. If you're not a Christian, it almost makes you one, doesn't it? Interestingly enough, they say, don't worry, We'll notify the Swiss people whenever we spy upon them. 
Isn't that what Edward Snowden is getting the death threats from our government about? The fact that he notified the American people that we were being spied upon, that he notified the world they were being spied upon? It's the same thing we've already seen happening with the TSA. It's telling you that you're on a no-fly list, but they won't tell you why. They won't tell you what you're being accused of. They won't tell you how to get off of that secret list. What this shows us is that the Swiss people are no more immune to being scared into giving up their liberty than Americans are. Remember, it was January of 2015. There were the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris. That frightened all of Europe. Then this bill was crafted in September of last year, a year ago. The Swiss people said at that time, no, 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 we're not going to give up our freedom. We're not going to give it up to a surveillance state. They began the referendum process collecting signatures. They needed 50,000 signatures. But then in November, there was a massive new attack in Paris, much larger than the Charlie Hebdo attack. And then throughout the summer, we had terror attacks throughout Europe. That was enough to make the Swiss throw in the towel on freedom, just as Americans did in the wake of 9-11 saying we're going to give up our freedoms for the promise of safety, the promise of the Patriot Act. You never get safety when you become a slave. To the extent that you give up your freedoms, you become a slave, and slaves are never safe. The globalists have created the safety problem that the Swiss are reacting to. They created it by unrestricted, unvetted immigration in such large numbers that it is nothing other than an invasion. Now, the Swiss may understand that the burqa is the enslavement of women by a violent and hateful theocracy, but even then, they can barely summon the will to ban it. What they don't understand is that their society will still descend into the same chaos as the countries the Muslims are fleeing if they don't resist the engineered chaos of the globalists. The true problem of Switzerland and the West is they no longer have the will to defend themselves. They clamor for safety from the same people that created the danger. And one of the reasons for this is that they have been sold a bill of goods by the people that run their country that their culture, their legal system, their Christianity is something that must be despised. Switzerland offers a good example of why we should not be ashamed of Western civilization, of Western culture, of Christianity itself. Think of the Red Cross. Where did that symbol come from? The Red Cross is essentially a reversal of the colors of the Swiss flag, but of course in the center of it is the cross. Switzerland at one time was the most Christian country in Europe. And it was those values that essentially created charities. Charity is nothing other than another word for love. And it was Christianity that motivated the love to go out and try to help people. It was a Swiss doctor who created the Red Cross. And it was in Geneva that they established a system of war conventions and war crimes, one of the things saying that if you attack or try to enslave people that are helping uh, people under the sign of the Red Cross, that is a war crime. Medical personnel and others were to be protected if they flew the Red Cross. Again, just flipping the images of the Swiss flag. Now when they went into to Islamic countries, especially into Turkey, trying to help people there, the Turks rejected that. They could not tolerate the symbol of the cross. So they demanded that they change it to a red crescent. And now we have about one-sixth of the countries in the world ban the symbol of the red cross, but establish the red crescent. That's their option to do that in their countries. If they want to have a country that is intolerant of other people, fine. But we need to understand the intolerance of the Muslims. And we need to understand the compassion that was engendered by Christianity and Western values. Not be ashamed of that. Stand up for that. Not be cowered into fear and clamoring for safety from our governments. We need to have the will to survive as a Western people. And Switzerland, if they look at their history, has one of the best examples of the transcendence of Western civilization and Western culture. For InfoWars.com, I'm David Knight. What's your view on the, the debates, uh, James? Okay. Now, the first couple callers, I agree with them about the Fourth Amendment. I'd kind of like to hear Trump walk that back. Now, that being said, listen to what Clinton said. She has a plan to fight ISIS on the Internet. 
ISIS doesn't scare me on the Internet. She has no plan to fight ISIS on the Internet. She has a plan to bind the tongues of people like you, people like Matt Drudge, people like me, people like Larry Nichols. They want to bind our thoughts. They want to quarantine our thoughts. And that's the most dangerous, sickening thing. And you people want to nitpick Trump. Uh, and look, I... That's I right. He should have brought up the alt-right. I mean, she's saying... She's, she said in a fundraising letter, Larry... A month ago that we have no right to exist that is literal nazi terminology yeah, it is and and that's what she believes alex she has believed that since the day i met her i've told you the story about meeting hillary the first time that that's who she is and she can dress up they can put makeup on her they can try to make her look like better than she does mary poppins yeah but it is not the real hillary clinton is the one that stood there in that he hearing sentence, or the hearing on Benghazi and said, what, they're dead, what difference does it make? And I've seen her be that way about many people close to her that have died. She don't care. They don't care about nothing. Well, here's the, uh, I'm not a hateful person, but let me tell you, there is a God, there is a devil, and Hillary Clinton's going straight to hell. I don't normally talk about that with people, but I think it's fair to say she is a demonically controlled person. Well, you know, Alex, I've told you before, and I never really put anything into it until more recent. You know, I used to have to cover for her to go out to L.A. with Linda Bloodworth Thomas to go to a witch's church. Now, I don't know what a witch's church does, but she told me she was just covering both bases. Owen Schroyer from Infowars.com, and we are at Hofstra University. The first presidential debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton is just moments away. There are a lot of people out here on the street. We saw a group marching for Hillary Clinton. We saw a group marching for Jill Stein. Jill Stein has a group of people out here marching. They want Jill Stein in the debate. It's funny, Gary Johnson is the one going around on all the mainstream media saying, why aren't I in the debate? I should be in the debate. But I don't really see too many Gary Johnson people out here. We saw a couple, but there was a large group of people marching for Jill Stein. Now, the most recent development here at Hofstra is there will be a trigger warning, folks. That's right. In America, we are all children, and we need to have a trigger warning. There might be some language that might offend these students here, so they want to be warned. Watch out. You know, pin your ears in case something offensive is said. Of course, this is obviously they're concerned with the things that Trump is going to say. This is purely a reaction to the type of rhetoric that Donald Trump is going to bring to this debate, without a doubt. So we're going to continue walking around. Maybe we'll talk to some people here. Maybe we'll get some interviews. And we found some Gary Johnson supporters. I've got one right here. Marissa, you're out here. You're out here talking about Gary Johnson. You want to bring Gary Johnson to the debate? Is that why you're out here? Uh, yes, I, I would like to bring him into the debate. Um, I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, yeah, I'd like to see him in the debate. He uh, he's he's the only good choice. Uh, Trump and Hillary are ob obviously insane, um, and uh, Trump is a p uh, <laughs> um, quote Gary Johnson. What do you like the best about Johnson? Um, honestly, I, I, I like his drug policies a lot. I think we should legalize. Um, I, uh, I, I, I agree with a, a lot of what he says. Like I said, especially his drug policy is ending mass incarceration. Um, you know, the, the gun laws, uh, because we should have guns, uh, since, you know, the police are militarizing themselves and, uh, we're supposed to be attacked supposedly by terrorists um yeah i, I don't know I'm so are you going to be with gary johnson until the very end yes I, I i i know that the the whole thing is fixed uh really i think um i think the whole thing is kind of a farce but i'm i'm gonna vote anyway just uh you know just because i can and uh i'm not gonna vote for trump or hillary and i uh i want i i I want my vote to count, even though I know it's not going to. Do you know if Gary Johnson has found Aleppo yet? You know what? Who cares about Aleppo? I never heard of Aleppo before. Uh, I, I, I don't think too many people heard of Aleppo before, okay? He apologized for it, whatever. He doesn't know everything, okay? I wouldn't expect him to know everything. Um, I think he knows a hell of a lot more than Trump does. And... Uh, who the hell can, you know, that, that he doesn't know a, a obscure city in, in, you know, like, in another, I, I don't know. So Aleppo is not a big deal?
that he didn't know what Aleppo is? No, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, yeah, I understand our people are dying over there and everything, but uh, the fact that he didn't know where, where that was, no, I don't think that that's a big deal. Not at all. Not at all. All right, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks. I'm here with a Gary Johnson supporter, Anthony. Anthony, what do you like about Gary Johnson? Well, I like that he is the only candidate that actually has been a chief executive. He was two-term governor of um, New Mexico, and he balanced the budget there, and the state had a surplus. And I really think the national debt is a major problem in this country, and he's the only candidate that I think has the will and the um, solutions to fix it and to um, save um, the problem for my generation. So you've got a Gary Johnson sign here with his head. There are a couple other people. Are you guys trying to provide an optics that Gary Johnson supporters are still out there? Yes, um, we are definitely upset that, that he wasn't um, invited to the debate. Um, I think that all candidates should get into the debate regardless of what percentage of, in the polls they have. I think, it, I think it shows how corrupt this two-party system is. And I think if more people knew who Gary Johnson was, I think he would be polling much higher than he is now. I think it's the name recognition is his biggest problem. Do you think if he knew where Aleppo is, that might help too? Um, I really think that shows that he is authentic because the other candidates, um, especially Hillary, I'm pretty sure Trump too, have earpieces that were pe their supporters tell them where um, what, what to say. So I think it really shows the authenticity of him, that he's actually speaking for himself and not saying what people, other people want him to say. So are you going to be with Gary Johnson up till November 8th? Yes, I um, am going to be with Gary Johnson because I don't like the two major party candidates. I um, don't agree with him 100 percent, but I think what um, he stands for is closest to my views. And I, um, even though I don't think he, he, he has a chance of winning, it's not about winning, it's about getting those ideas out. And I definitely think if Gary Johnson does very well, it's going to show the major party that they can't ignore liberty again, like they have with the nomination of... Uh, Clinton and Trump. All right, thank you for your time. And I'm here with a former Trump employee, Joseph. Now, you actually worked for Donald Trump. You got to meet him, and you had some positive things to say. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, welcome first though, to Hofstra University, the first presidential debate. I, I uh, met Donald Trump uh, many, many years ago at the, one of his uh, hotel at the, uh, 42nd Street and uh, 42nd and Park Avenue. And then uh, I, uh, I I got involved with him because I thought he was so uh, such an excited man that you know he everything he touched became gold in New York and all New York the signatures all around are Trump. And I wanted to work for him because I wanted to contribute, and I wanted to learn from this man, you know. And so I, I got involved with, and I put my uh, my resume in, and obviously I became the director of, of, of the marketing of the Taj Mahal, Trump Taj Mahal Casino, which is the biggest one. And uh, we had a very successful time during the time, and we had a great team. We worked together, and the, Trump allowed the, not only. Uh, me, but every other group. He had every nationality, every group. You know, the the, the Latinos, the, uh, the the Oriental, the Arabs. Uh, every group working for him. So when I, when I hear about you know a Trump a racist, I think this is a baloney. Come on, guys. I mean, if the guy employs everybody, and you look in New York at all the buildings, and if you go on the West Side, the Hudson River, between uh, 59th Street and 72nd, everything is Trump, Trump, Trump. It's a Trump city there. And don't you think of thousands and thousands of people working for this, you know, for this man? And if you go in Central Park, uh, uh, Central Park uh, South, or Central Park West, or Central Park East, you're going to see Trump International Hotel. You're going to see Trump Park. If you go on Fifth Avenue, you see Trump Tower. Everywhere you turn around. So this guy is doing something right. In addition to all the tours, we get about 35 million tours coming to New York through Central Park. You know, if it wasn't for him, the ice skating ring would never be built. It took about uh, seven, eight years. It couldn't do anything. Then they called Trump, and Trump fixed it uh, on the budget, on the time, and, and, and the city's making money. The, the same thing with the carousel. The carousel was abandoned. Trump put his hands in there, and it done. So I think if you transfer that uh, ability into a national ability, this guy is a fast learner. He's a fast doer, and uh, you know he gets things done. Whereas Washington, you know, nothing gets done. I mean, if we look at, the, at this president, I found out that he has signed over 1,000 executive orders. This is no longer a democracy. The laws in this country are made by the legislative branch, which is Congress. But it looks like only the executive is working. And obviously, if he's going to appoint the more liberal judges, we're going to have a 
a judicial system that's not going to work anymore. So there is no more checks and balance. There is no more separation of power between uh, the state and the federal. So everything it looks like we're, we're moving to a, a, a country that there is no longer a democracy. It's a sort of a, the, the dictatorship. I'm here with Daoud Andre from Coma Coma, and you're out here protesting against Hillary Clinton. What has motivated you to come out here? Well, our group is Como Coda. It's the committee to mobilize against dictatorship in Haiti. We're here to tell the world about the crimes of the Clinton family in Haiti, that uh, the Clintons, they have stolen billions of Haiti earthquake reconstruction money. They installed a degenerate crackhead as president of our country. And he is the man, Michel Martelly, who signed the gold mine contracts with Hillary's brother, Anthony Rodham. We're telling the American people they should not support uh, Hillary Clinton because she's a liar, she's a crook, and were it not for the Obama administration protecting her, she would be in jail right now. And are you and your fellow demonstrators out here, are you guys from Haiti? Yes, we are from Haiti, and we're here, uh, well, of course, to, not just about what's happening in Haiti, but also because the Clintons, they have, uh, since they've been to the White House, been pimping black people here in the United States. They are responsible for building so much jails in this country, and they have millions and millions of pe black people in jail. Well, that's it for the show tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure and hit the subscribe button, and we will see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.